Well, hello, 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 Journey family. Welcome to another daily fireside chat. My name is Ed Martin, and I'm the youth director here at Journey Christian Church. We're so blessed and thankful that you are tuning in on our, this afternoon. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I hope you're getting out somewhat. hope you're handling quarantine life well. I know we're probably sick and tired of hearing the words social distancing and quarantine, but I still pr praying and hoping that you are all doing well that day when we're all going to be together in the sanctuary together, that's coming. It's closer than you think. So don't give up. Hang in there. I know it can be a little aggravating with all this, but don't give up. Don't quit. Hang in there. That day is coming. That day where we're going to be, it's closer than you think. We're closer to it than we were before. So hang in there. Keep your chin up. So I just thought I'd share with you guys today a little devotional. And... Wednesday nights for me, on a, when things were normal, was I'd be in my office on normal Wednesdays, getting ready for Wednesday nights. So I'm get prep, either finishing my message, prepping my message. I'm coordinating with my youth team on who's doing the icebreaker, who's doing announcements, and then I'm in I'm in the office almost all day, and then all then I wait till like five o'clock, and then students start showing up. And it's great. And I get to see my people, my students, my youths. But obviously, <laughs> given the certain current, current circumstances, um, we have to do things a little bit differently. So I thought I'd share with you what we, as the youth group, what are the series that we've been going through. And we've been going through the book of Jeremiah. And we've been looking at key moments in Jeremiah's life that we can relate to. Jeremiah is one of my faith heroes. He was faithful, he was obedient to the Lord, and he spoke God's word to an audience that 90% of the time did not listen or care. I mean, and he did that for since he was 17 till when he died. It's a long time of preaching the same message, yet he was still faithful to God. And one of the, one of the, the verses that we're focusing on tonight is on Jeremiah 29.11. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Now that is one of the most quoted verses in the Bible. You see it on t-shirts, coffee mugs, sweatshirts, graduation gift cards, graduation devotionals, on devotionals in general. It is very popular. Um, it's very commonly quoted because yes god does know the plans for you god knows the plans for me he knows the plans for you he knows the right path for you but that verse is also one of the most taken out of context verses in all the bible and what and you might be saying well what are you saying ed what are you what are you trying to get at well i think we what i want to share with you is give you a little context of that passage because i think this relates somewhat to what we're going through today but let me just give you a little context. So like I was saying, Jeremiah preached God's word, was called by God when he was 17 years old, preached God's word to an audience that didn't care, didn't listen. And he sang the same message. Repent, turn, come back to the Lord. Let go of those false idols you're worshiping. Stop looking to the left or the right. Come back to the Lord. Repent. God will meet you. God is... God wants to have a relationship with you. Return to the covenant God has called you to. And Israel is just stubborn. They won't listen. They think Jeremiah is crazy and nut. Whenever Jeremiah is preaching the word, they're like, oh, there goes Jeremiah again saying the same stuff. We're not going to listen. No, we're not. And then after a while, the message begins to change. The tone begins to change in saying, judgment is coming. Okay, you're a guy, you guys aren't going to listen. God's going to bring judgment. Get ready. And it's still the same response. No, nope, no, nope, we're not listening. And then judgment comes. The Babylonians come. King Nebuchadnezzar sacks the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible shares in 2 Kings that they took away 10,000 captives away back to Babylon. And the remainder of the city, the poor were left. And so Israel's taken away 
to a foreign land, to Babylon. They're in a whole different world, whole different people, different lifestyles, different cultures, different food. They are not in their normal neighborhood, so to speak. The phrase total, I don't think we are in Kansas anymore, really applies here. They are far away. They are in exile. And I look at this situation, and there's two ways you could look at this. One of them, you could be like, you know what, Israel? You done messed up, Aaron. You screwed up. You done messed up. You want my sympathy. You get none of it. You got exactly what you deserve. You didn't want to listen to God. You didn't want to pay attention to his word. That's on you. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is saying, you know what? This is a really sad story. This is a really tragic story that all Israel had to do was to trust God. All they had to do was listen. All they had to do was tear down the false idols. All they had to do was turn their wicked ways. All they had to do was turn their hearts back to God. All they had to do was trust him. And for not doing that, it cost them greatly. And I look at this situation and how it applies to being quarantined. It almost feels like we're in exile, so to speak. Now, I'm not saying like the Babylonians are, I'm not saying it's like the government. I know there's some people saying, you know, the government's trying to take over, blah, blah, blah. And, and I don't want to wade into politics here on these fireside chats. And I'm not on that train. Government's trying to take over. But it does feel like we're in exile a little bit, right? We're cut off from each other. We're sick and tired of hearing the word social distancing and quarantine, all that stuff. But we're kind of cut off from each other. Everything's different. All our normals are upside down. All our routines, even days, like Wednesdays feel like Fridays. Mondays feel like Sundays. Sundays feel like it's a Tuesday. Everything, all the routines. For some of you, you're not being able to go to work or having to wear a mask all the time all of a sudden. It's just, everything's different. Everything's goofed up and we feel, just even seeing people, it's like, whoa, it's a person. Look at that. <laughs> everything's different everything's upside down and also not only do we are we physically distant from each other but we there's we we can't connect and and i think in the same way israel they were physically distant from their home but they were spiritually distant from god and maybe that's how you're feeling as you're tuning in you've been feeling cut off from god you've been feeling distant you've been just feeling not feeling that connection and I got to tell you, you're not alone. You might be feeling just kind of discouraged, lonely. It's just like, man, I just feel like I can't connect with God. Where, God, where are you? And maybe you're listening and maybe you backslidden or you're struggling in your walk. But I want to encourage you. God's not finished with you yet. God's not finished with you yet. Jeremiah so we're kind of coming back to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah is writing this time. To, it says, it starts off in verse one, to the elders in captivity in Babylon. And he's, he's giving them instruction to what to do on how to live. And he's not giving them news like, hey, listen, I want to let you know you're going to be back in Israel in a couple of weeks. So just sit, sit tight, you know, stay around in Babylon just for a couple of weeks and then we're going to bring you back. And he says, no. Get comfortable, sit tight. You're gonna be in Babylon for 70 years. 70 years. I'm 27, 70 years, I'm gonna be 97. I don't even wanna think about it. <laughs> 97. But Jeremiah says, get comfortable. You're gonna be in Babylon for 70 years. Get married, have children. But when the 70 years are up, God's gonna bring you back. And then he says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. To give you hope and a future. I've got to tell you, God's love and grace, compassion, mercy, it's astounding. I mean, you think of what God does for us day to day, but you think of God's people, Israel, who did nothing but slap him in the face figuratively. Didn't listen, stubborn, inconsiderate. God still says, I'm going to bring you back. And I have plans for you. To not harm you, but to prosper you. Man, 
Does God love his people? And man, does God love you? And maybe you're feeling in exile. You're feeling distant. God's not done with you yet. God's still pursuing you. You think of God's plans for us, God's plans for Israel. Some of the people, it probably didn't match up. Their plans, their plans probably didn't match up with God's plan. God, I don't want to live in Babylon for 70 years. I want to be back in Israel, in my home. I'm thinking of the elderly at that time. They were going to finish out their days in Babylon. They're probably like, you know, I want to grow old and die in Jerusalem. I don't want to be in Babylon. And sometimes God's plans don't look the same as we think they are. And, you know, sometimes our plans, you know, God, we want God to change our circumstances. And I'm not saying God doesn't answer those prayers or God doesn't want to answer those prayers. But sometimes when we're in tough circumstances, God's not so much fixated on changing your circumstances. He's more concerned about changing your heart. So God's, God wants to change your heart. He, he wants to change your circumstances, but he also he wants to change your heart, your perspective. We talked about last week about how he shapes us and molds us into his image. And God uses these moments to shape us and mold us. And God's plans don't always look the way we think they do. They don't match up with our, with our plans. But God knows the plans for you. And he, knows, he knew the plans for Israel. And, he's, and you may be feeling in exile, but Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. God is saying, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. So maybe today is the day. Maybe you've been backsliding. Maybe you've been feeling discouraged. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him out because he's seeking you. God has never left you or forsaken you. He's still seeking you. He still loves you. He still cares for you. And he still has work to do in you. He began a good work in you, it says in Philippians. And he will finish it. He will complete it. Because he knows the plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your compassion, your forgiveness, God. God, I thank you that you show the same grace every day to us, even when we don't deserve it. And God, while our plans don't always match up with your plans, God, I thank you that your way is better. Your way is higher. And so God, help us, Lord, to be patient in this season. God, I thank you that you use these moments to help us grow and fall more in love with you. I pray, Lord, you bless everybody who's listening. Bless them as they go about their week and their day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. And a great rest of your week. God bless.